G'day, I'm Adam Hills. Welcome to The Last Leg Correspondence. This series, we've sent comedians into the streets of Britain to try to get to grips with the stories of our time. They've covered Islamophobia, disability assessments, online security, fox hunting... And if you haven't seen them yet, why not order in some takeout and have a night in front of the laptop? Just a nice, romantic evening. <laughs> <laughs> Watching some clips about Islamophobia. <laughs> a little bit of correspondence and chill. There's no way. <laughs> If you told me you'd had a night in front of the laptop, I would think you'd... <laughs> <laughs> now, this last one of the series concerns a topic none of us three are qualified to tackle. Periods. I'm fine with it. Really? Victorian era. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabethan. <laughs> Just ask me about them, I'll tell you, mate. Stone Age. It's one of those Jurassic. weird things. Jurassic. <laughs> I mean, you're doing the classic avoidance right now. Oh, but... oh sorry, wrong type of periods. Full stops right now. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we've got no idea. So this week, Carrie Ad Lloyd looks into something called period poverty. Hi, I'm Carrie Ad Lloyd, and I want to talk to you about period poverty. <laughs> oh, God, you drink a bit. Period. I want to talk to you about period poverty. Oh, my it... God. It's a period. Run! Get away! Get away! I'm Carriad, and I want to talk to you about period poverty. Oh, disgusting. Well, I just want to talk about periods. Excuse me. Oh, she touched me. She touched me. I just want to talk about periods. Not the fun stuff, like the blobs and the cramps, the unexpected weeping, the crime scene, toilet bowl, bloody joy of it all. I want to talk about period poverty. In the UK in 2017, there were girls missing school every month because they cannot afford sanitary products. That's here, in the UK. Not in some faraway country, here, right now. On average, a British woman will spend over £18,000 in her lifetime on sanitary products and pain relief. So if you're on a low income and you're already struggling to buy food, is it any surprise tampons become a luxury you can't afford? But why aren't people talking about this? Do people actually know what period poverty is? I decided to put on my most expensive and luxurious dress and go and talk to the public. Girl, you know tampons aren't cheap. You gotta be pretty classy to pull off a super plus. What do you think when you hear the words period poverty? Period property. Uh, poor in terms of like happiness, maybe. Oh, like so, like a sad period. Yeah. Okay, so you've never heard of period property before. Not that, not that phrase, no. Lack of people, uh, tampons. Tampons. Yeah. How do you feel about the tax on tampons? Well, it doesn't bother me too much because I don't need them. You don't need them. You're walking free. But and I easy. think it's a bit rough on women. Don't really feel like they should have to pay tax on it. Sort of like food, really. I just never knew whether to get the. The extreme ones, where, where you bleed too much. Oh yeah. All the other ones. What are the, what do we call those levels? Gushing, dripping. Oh. Are you jealous? Do you wish you had a period? Yeah, I'd really like to try it. Honestly, I really would. Um, I guess if you wanted a hint, imagine if I kicked you in the pool over yeah. and over and over again for eight hours, but you still had to go to work while I was doing it. Yeah, I'd probably have to call in sick. But so. but you can't because you did that last month. Yeah. So what literally is a period? <laughs> it's when the egg is there and it doesn't get fertilized and so it falls out. <laughs> Why do women get periods? It's so we have to suffer. <laughs> Why do women have periods? Do you know that? Um, no, just, they just, it's just lucky. Diets. Of course people are confused. We don't even say the word half the time. And we have so many euphemisms for period. On the blob, on the rag, Liverpool are playing at home, raspberry pavlova for dinner, ketchup on your streaky bacon, eating Satan's bolognese. And those are just traditional British sayings. Coming. The communists are in the fun house. Little Miss Strawberry. The tomato soup is overcooked. If we weren't so embarrassed about periods, perhaps girls wouldn't be so embarrassed to say they can't afford tampons. Mmm. Mmm, tasty blood. I mean soup. <laughs> or do I? I feel so useless. I really want to help, but what can I do? What can anyone do? Well, actually, quite a bit. A 17-year-old Amica George is proving. Hi, Hi Amica. Nice to meet you. Hi, Carrie. Come in. Thank you. So, 
what was it that got you involved in period poverty in the first place? So earlier this year, I started to kind of realise that the BBC and all the kind of big um, news corporations and the media were starting to cover period poverty. I was really shocked that nothing was being done about it and no one was really trying to change this problem. Um, so I started a petition on change.org and I called it Free Periods. Um, and the idea is it's calling on the government to give free sanitary products to girls on free school meals. Have you felt like there's they're listening or...? Yeah, I'm hoping now that kind of all these campaigns are taking off and people are starting to talk about it a lot more. So hopefully once that taboo is kind of broken and people break the stigma, um, the government will feel like they are in a position to change things. At the moment, tampons have VAT added to their cost. That means they're classed as a luxury item. However, thanks to some very successful campaigning, that tax is going to be scrapped in 2018. Great, yay, thanks very much. But what about now? What if you can't afford them right now? Gabby, what is Bloody Good Period? Bloody Good Period collects and distributes sandwich tiles for asylum seekers, refugees and those that can't afford them. Amazing. So why did you start Bloody Good Period? I started because I was volunteering at a drop-in centre for asylum seekers and I received the list of all the things that were essential. Notice there weren't any sandwich tiles. Um, so I asked, you know, is that, have they been missed off the list? And they said, oh no, we only have them in emergencies. And I was just, my mind was blown because I was just like, every time you don't have a sandwich towel or a tampon, yeah. it is an emergency. <laughs> always an emergency. And so I decided to set it up as an organisation. So in your experience, what were people using before they were getting these free products? We've heard lots of different accounts. Mm -hmm. Some people were just using wads of toilet paper. Yeah. I mean, that is a big wad. That's a big wad. <laughs> and that is an uncomfortable, scratchy wad. A lot of them were using rags. And then some were using nothing. What are the health implications for women? Like, why is it bad to make one tampon last all day? There's the risk of toxic shock syndrome. Mm. Everyone's always heard of somebody who died from it. Um, and it's, you know, it's very real. Like, it's a very infectable place, I guess, the vagina. And I think just the general sort of how your mental health is when you yeah. are constantly worrying about bleeding, like, that anxiety... I can't possibly imagine, and I don't think anyone should have to experience that. So girls are reportedly missing a few days school mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm. What is the cost of that to their education? Like, it's huge. Isn't that absolutely huge? I mean, it's a human right to have education, and when you're not being able to access an education because of your gender, then that is an absolute travesty. For it to be the reason that you don't get to go to uni, you don't get to go to sixth form, you know, you don't get to get a good job, because you've just not been at a quarter of school. That's terrible. It's amazing the VAT is going to be scrapped, but girls need help now. If you needed to wipe your ass today, you'd be pretty annoyed if I told you to wait until 2018. But things are starting to change. Waitrose and Tesco have both agreed to pay the VAT for their customers, and thanks to successful campaigning by Scottish MP Monica Lennon, there is now a trial scheme there to provide sanitary products for women on low incomes. Tampons aren't a luxury, but more needs to be done now to help the women and girls that need them most. And anyway, it's not them I feel sorry for, it's the tampons. This is Steve. He's a tampon and he's unemployed because he's too expensive. He wishes he was free. All over the UK, there are young girls and women who need a tampon just like Steve but they can't afford to take him off the shelf. All Steve wants is somewhere warm and snug to lay his head. All he wants is an old uterus lining to fill him up, but there's a string attached. He can't get his dinner tonight because he's too expensive. He's being prevented from doing so by people who think tampons and sanitary towels are luxuries and not essential items. Don't leave Steve on the shelf. Keep him warm in a big old uterus tonight. We need to start making sanitary products available and affordable for the women and girls that need them most. And we can start today by acknowledging and addressing the problem of period poverty and help get tampons like Steve here in a spare womb tonight. Come on, Steve. I got somewhere warm you can stay. For the series of Last Week Correspondents. Thank you to all our correspondents and feel free to check out some of the others if you haven't already. Thank you, Carriad. Thanks for watching. See you next time.
met her afterwards. She was lovely. She's she, lovely. She's she great. said, here's my card if you ever need a one-legged stripper. <laughs> <laughs> have, you got, have you got that card? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was great was watching Alex on the red carpet. This oh. girl went to me, um, oh, Alex, can you sign this for me? And then she went, actually, can you sign this? <laughs>